The title of our episode today is The Wisdom of Not Knowing. And our question um, is, can we turn not knowing and even bafflement into our friend? Can we do that? And yes, of course, because we're going to use poetry to explore this question, to dig into this question, that means you are listening to Poetry, Gossip, and the Pursuit of Pleasure with Dale Byron. I'm your host. That's me. And uh, in this podcast, we explore, as we always say each week, creative, practical ways poetry can help us in our everyday lives, finding little pockets of joy sanity, and connectedness. Okay, let's get right into it. Um, so can we transform, here's our question, can we transform a condition that we normally loathe into something useful and even valuable? The condition is not knowing, is not knowing, or its scarier uh, sibling, uh, bafflement, more ominous <laughs> um sibling bafflement can we turn them both not knowing and even bafflement as we're saying into assets rather than conditions of dread lamentation and really uh, things that we actively avoid can we do that well let's try this view let's try this thought experiment on you know let's just say that we've been wrong about our biggest challenges and let me explain um, you, you could say that our biggest challenges are some wicked mix of climate, which is really a nested symptom up underneath um, the larger uh, challenge of uh, overall ecological overshoot. You could say that plus the politics up underneath all of that. Um, but what if those are not actually problems? What if a better way to think about them, a better word for them, is predicament. wonder if that was is true. Because, see, predicaments are incredibly multifaceted and complex. And predicaments, um, you know, are not solvable in any um, uh, conventional sense. Because uh, unlike problems, predicaments are not given to these heroic you know, well, we're going to do this, right? And it's a yes or no kind of thing where it's solved or it's not. Um, a, a black or white answer is another metaphor that we might use because predicaments are so multifaceted. It's so complex. I mean, think of these challenges, political and ecological, that they require many, many, many different responses no one particular quote unquote solution, but many responses will be required, uh, which, and they must be taken, as I was thinking about this, with some combination of great skill, of course, and knowledge, with curiosity, which is, I think, more important than we normally hold it. And most importantly, most importantly, and underrated, I think, is that we must take these um, responses with humility, with a great deal of humility. But before we talk about this, let's kind of ground it in the first poem that we're going to use today, which is by William Stafford and is called A Course in Creative Writing. A Course in Creative Writing, the poem goes like this. They want a wilderness with a map. They want a wilderness with a map. But how about errors that give a new start? Or leaves that are edging into the light? Or leaves that are edging into the light? Or the many places a road can't find? Maybe there's a land where you have to sing to explain anything, anything. You blow a little whistle, you blow a little whistle just right, and the next tree you meet is itself, is itself. And many a tree is not there yet. Things come toward you. Things come toward you when you walk, when you walk. You go along singing a song that says, 
where you are going becomes its own because you start. You blow a little whistle, you blow a little whistle, and the world begins under the map. A Course in Creative Writing by William Stafford. Now, as I've always said, a great poem, in my opinion, is one that you can step, we can step inside of that poem and have our own experience. So whatever experience you are having right now, uh, having heard this poem, um, that is absolutely valid. A poem means what it means when we drop it inside our body, or the other metaphor I like to use is when we step inside the poem. So, but let's dig into it just a little bit. And again, if we take these multifaceted, complex predicaments that we're talking about around ecology and the politics up underneath that, we think about that for a minute. What is the poem saying? It's saying maybe we need to look at this in a very creative way, almost like in a creative writing way, because the protagonist in this case is saying, we want a wilderness with a map. See, we want it to all be mapped out. But if you think about it, by definition, a complex, uh, multifaceted predicament is really, uh, it has many different maps. You know, think of yourself. You are a complex territory yourself. There's many different ways I can describe the roles that you have in life. There's many different maps I can use that would all be valid, but no one map in particular would be complete. Well, that's, I think, what we're facing. We want a wilderness with a map. But the protagonist in the poem says, but how about heirs that give a new start? Or leaves. Think about leaves on a tree that are edging into the light or the many places a road can't find. What are we really saying here? Well, for me, as I walk inside that poem, I go, just like these incredibly complex predicaments, a, a kind of creative approach, a creative writing approach would be to say, we must simply start. Because if we take one step, we will see new steps. If we take the second step, we will see the third and fourth step, perhaps. And these are things that we would not even have known had we not started and had faith in this process, had faith in our own agency to move forward. Um, now, sometimes I think it can be helpful to have a North Star. And for me, I've often talked about in my work with poetry that poetry helps us connect with ourselves, with others, and with the great other or the natural world. Now, um, I love, uh, along these same lines, there's a, a friend and mentor of mine, Robert Gilman of the Context Institute. And I love the way he frames it. He talks about, rather than the word connection, which I think is powerful, but he uses, I think, an even more powerful metaphor, which is that our uh, maker's mark or our North Star is always harmony with ourselves, within ourselves, harmony with others, and harmony with the natural world, or sometimes what I call the great other. So, but the North Star is this harmony. And so I think that points us in the right direction to use the faith that we have, the agency, agency that we have, to simply take one step after another and let the path, it's like the great poet said, um, map maker, map maker, there is no, or path maker, path maker, there is no path. Your walking makes the path. Your walking makes the path. So in the second stanza, um, the uh, protagonist in the poem says, maybe there's a land where you have to sing to explain anything. You blow a little whistle, just right, and the next tree you meet is itself, is itself, becomes itself, is itself, and many a tree is not there yet. Oh, so delicious because it's saying, once you take on this idea that you have creative 
agency in your life. You don't have to know it all. You can't know it all in a complex, multi-faceted um, uh, system in this predicament. You can't know it all, but you can take, if you're pointed at your North Star, which is harmony within, harmony with others, and harmony with the great other or the natural world. That is your North Star. So if you take one step after another with this feeling, a feeling of humble confidence, <laughs> let's put it that way, then your each step will reveal another step or another half step, and then on and on. So the poem goes on. Things come toward you when you walk. Oh, well, that's the world opening up to us. But we would never have that opening had we not started with our humble confidence. You go along singing a song that says, where you are going becomes its own because you start. You blow a little whistle and a world begins under the map. It begins these, these responses, uh, many of them, begin to uh, unfold in a way that is skillful. Um, so where are we starting from? Well, where we're starting from, as we're saying in our theme today, in our question, is we're starting from not knowing. We're starting from bafflement. Now, you know, there's an old funny saying, it says, if you can't fix it, feature it. <laughs> well, if we can't fix and we certainly can't. We can't fix not knowing in a complex situation, multifaceted. We can't even fix bafflement. So let's use those as our friend. Uh, and, and again, along with, this is very important, a deep and curious wonder, and most importantly, a humility. That we must take these steps, nudging us forward in faith, that additional steps will be revealed if we just start. By taking one tentative even sometimes stumbling step after another. In fact, my note says, let's not be afraid to not know. Let's not even be afraid to stumble, even to be baffled. <laughs> if harmony at all these levels of self, other, and the great other is our North Star, we will be, we can be assured that our steps, no matter how tentative, no matter how um, uh, stumbling, they will be wiser. Uh, with just the right mix of caution and boldness as we take each step. Okay, we only have one more poem, just two poems today to make our point, to ask this question about, um, uh, you know, can we, uh, the wisdom of not knowing, can we turn not knowing and even bafflement uh, into our friend? And this is a poem I've done several times, I think, on this podcast, but it fits so well. I just had to do it again. The Real Work by Wendell Berry, that amazing poet and ecologist and farmer and professor, and so many maps for him. He is a complex human being, <laughs> as we all are. Okay, poem goes like this, The Real Work. It may be, it may be, that when we no longer know what to do, we have come to our real work. And that when we no longer know what, or know which way to go, excuse me, when we no longer know which way to go, we have come to our real journey. The mind that is not baffled is not employed. The mind that is not baffled is not employed. The impeded stream the impeded stream is the one that sings. Have you ever been walking in the woods? Did you do it as a, as a young, as a child? Have you, have you done it lately? Have you been walking through the woods and you come to a stream and there's like a limb that has fallen or, um, you know, critters like beavers have impeded the stream they've put something in the stream or naturally it's just fallen leaves a limb a log and you just hear as the water makes its way and finds its way through the impediment it makes a little noise it makes a little whistling a little singing noise the mind that is not baffled is not employed says Wendell Berry says the 
protagonist in this poem. The impeded stream is the one that sings. Ah, there's little doubt that we are an impeded stream. So let us sing. We've got very uh, deep, complex, multifaceted, um, existential challenges, ecologically, politically. And what is required, I believe, what the poetic tradition tells us it's required that we operate at our outer at our outer frontiers that we operate as an impeded stream which is not always comfortable it's not always comfortable to not know it's not certainly not comfortable to feel baffled and yet agency within that if we don't allow ourselves to be shut down in a kind of despair, which helps no one, by the way, not ourselves, certainly, not others. But if we can uh, take one step at a time, if we can make one response at a time, if we can be creative, as the poem describes, if we can take bafflement on as a, a badge of uh, courage <laughs> and as being on the right track and do so with this confident humility, which sounds like a paradox because it is. Confident humility, if we can do that. Um, finally, the poet William Stafford once said, I have woven a parachute out of everything broken. I have woven a parachute out of everything broken. That kind of tells it all. So that is where we are. And our North Star is harmony within harmony with others, and harmony with the great other or the natural world. And if we begin to take steps with a kind of uh, confident yet humble um, moves and agency and faith in our own agency, we will uh, move forward. Okay, that is a wrap. As I always say, if you felt a sense of inspiration here. If you've learned anything, if you found a new poem that you love now, then um, refer it to others. Uh, you know, like the video, make a comment, you know, anything. I'd love to get the word out. Get these poems to more people, the people who uh, want the poems, of course. So, as I always say, in the meantime, until next uh, episode and next poems, please take good care of yourself. <laughs>